was formed more than 30 years ago in the most unlikely of circumstances. Gazzy, you're here. <laughs> Vinny's in LA. Why did you put the bin on? <laughs> For some reason, he's put a large bin on his head. What's this? Improved your looks, Vinny. Because you're talking rubbish, Isn't Piers. it? <laughs> you're talking rubbish. Yeah. Oh. And that is a trash can. I need the yeah. bin, Vinny. I need I've it. I've been there. <laughs> what is it like being interviewed by someone who's sort of borderline in love with you, like Piers? It's <laughs> not even borderline. It's <laughs> Alan Smith. It's lovely. <laughs> Don't get a hard time at all, do you? Mate, you, no. you're spared. You have a permanent James pass. Brokenshire can only dream of an interview like this. Who was this? your football hero? Last question. <laughs> Who was your... There he is. There we oh, go. Hello. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Who's my brilliant. football hero? Yeah. I didn't really have one. When I was very young, everyone loved Georgie Best. Yeah. When I got a bit older, I loved Kenny Dalgleish. Yeah. It was an honour to get on the same pitch as him. And He's who's the, the homegrown footballer who you admire most at the moment? Oh, you've sprung that on me. Homegrown footballer. Yeah. Um, I say that as a Palace fan because... Harry oh, Kane? You, Zaha. Harry Kane? Do you want me to say Zaha? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, he's, I, I, he's a fantastic player. And there are all sorts of voices clamouring for you <laughs> to put yourself up for the next Bond. I know, I heard that the other day. I've definitely not been contacted. I'm definitely not, um, obviously, up for doing something like that. But um, it's nice to be linked, I suppose. Uh, can you do a Sean Connery voice? Definitely not. Can definitely you do not. a Roger Moore eyebrow? Definitely not. Well, maybe I can. I don't know. I don't know how to... I don't know. <laughs> maybe. It's like being in the room with him. <laughs> um, so when you're in uh, Guy Ritchie's Knights of the Round Table, which I think is coming out next year, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. You've got how many lines in it? Um, more than I wanted, to be honest. Uh, Guy, had, we, I, I was down at his house and we were having a glass of wine and he said, you know, maybe you should, you know, play, you know, because Man From U.N.C.L.E. went so well, you know, a word here and there. But it was like 11 or 12 lines. I was like, this is going to be a real challenge. But um, it went well. Uh, it went really well on, on the day, and uh, I enjoyed it. You'd obviously heard about this kid, Gaza, right? Everyone was talking about him. What was your strategy for stopping him, other than what appeared to be grabbing his lower abdominal region? Well, I'd have grabbed him by the air if he had any, so I grabbed him by the yeah. nuts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but was it, was it actually... A realization that this was this guy was a pretty special player. Yeah, I mean nowadays, you know, they're talking now, Piers, about uh, Hazard going to Real Madrid. The thing is, all this was basically, and as these things do, even the worst family rifts, they do eventually settle down, or all, 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 all the rubble gradually goes down to the bottom, and things slowly get back to normal. And then it's all come up again, and this is the reason you're here because you've just made this advert, um, which is actually, I think, very funny, um, where you just make some very subtle nods towards what happened between you and, and Ryan. Why did you do it? It was just a bit of fun, really. Like I say, I, I've moved on. And it says, like, I've forgiven him. I've forgiven him a couple of years ago, to be honest, but I've had a lot of things that I, I could have done, but this was presented to me and it was, it was directed where it was, it was done well. Did it help to make a joke of it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, you, yeah you know, negativity, it, 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 it's, it's not healthy, so, yeah, to move on. Bit of comedic way. You did it in tongue in cheek, but there is a feeling, is there, from other members of the family that they think you overstepped the mark? They're not very happy with it. Um, I think he overstepped the mark. I think don't think I did. Right. <laughs> you think he overstepped the mark? Well, you, yeah. I, I, what I did was was funny. What he did was a car crash. So yeah, football. If you carry on eating the same, you're going to put weight on. So I'd be worried about your weight loss, because I think it's addling your brain. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Come on, then, what you got? <laughs> because you have recently said you want Tottenham to Yo. win the Champions League. And as, a, right. as an Arsenal season ticket holder, okay. I genuinely thought you'd lost your marbles, Mr Seaman. <laughs> Explain yourself. The question was put to me, would you want Tottenham to win the champion, uh, Champions League if they were playing foreign opposition? And mm. I said yes. But even that is unacceptable. It's not. Huh? No. I would, I'd still go on. I normally, I don't normally, I don't normally, I don't think I've ever agreed with Piers Morgan, but on this one I do. Oh, that's true. <laughs> well, so you, you wouldn't want Everton to win? <laughs> no chance! No <laughs> Somewhere in a wet and windy part of the country. Who were the people that influenced you uh, when you were starting out? <clears throat> my biggest influence would have been my dad, I think. Um, he had me kicking a football. But, for instance, if I had to nominate, probably my best friends, mum and dad, to be honest. Um, one was Brian Hampton, give him a little mention. Um, and, you know, he used to coach, do the training, you know, do all what the games. Uh, Oliver's Battery at the time, team in Winchester, yeah. yeah. And the mum used to wash the kits. So it's, you know, and if I could go back and vote for them, I know they'd appreciate it. And, you know, those volunteers take so much time out that they yeah. do deserve that. And they will appreciate it. So, 
you know, I, I urge people to, you know, get online and start voting. I but talked to Gareth a long time ago when he got the job and he said, I, I want to try and play with a lot of pace. I want to try and play a Premier League way. And, and he has. I mean, it's all about timings. If you want to be heavyweight champion in the world, you've got to come in at the right time. You don't want to be... You imagine being the second best boxer in the world when Mike Tyson's round. You ain't winning. Yeah. But we've got a good team. Yeah. You've not had a drink now in four or five years and you're a changed man in many respects. How tough is it for professional footballers in particular? We have all the adulation, all the crowds, all the glory, all the fame to try and keep a lid on things. Well, it's hard when you retire, as Gaza knows. You, you're training everybody with the lads every day and you're, and you're working out, you're having the banter, it's great fun, and, and then all of a sudden one day it stops. You know, I was lucky enough to go on to something else. But, you know, when you try and stay in the game, um, you know, alcohol's a disease and, and you know, Gaza fights very well with that now, just like he did when he played. You know, I'm six years now, whereas I, I, I was more of a heavy, heavy drinker than an alcoholic. So I just think it's a young man's sport and um, I, I retired from it, you know. But, uh, you know, we've been, we've been good mates for a long, long time. You know, we've got the tour coming up. We're going to do four nights. And Gazza, I got the golf clubs. Thanks very much, them Callaways. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> baby. <laughs> you should have said I'll have stolen. Anyway, I don't like Callaways, so the ordinary way of pal. That's right. Who's the ones that got stolen from my car? I don't know what you're about. Look at this extraordinary trophy. Do you take that with you everywhere? <laughs> uh, at the moment, I do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's nearly as big as you, Fran. It is. I was holding it at the awards. I was like, I don't know which way to hold it. <laughs> So this is the first time this has been uh, awarded. This is the not this one. So this one's the PFA one. That's the PFA uh, one. So the, the Football of the year. Writers Association one is the first one. Yeah. Okay, and and if, and if, is that a, does that come with a huge trophy as well, or is that? I haven't just... actually got that one yet. So you haven't so, seen it. No, I haven't seen it yet. So that's on the tenth of May. So that, I mean, it's, it, what is what is fantastic is that you've won Player of the Season here, uh, and then of course on the same night, did you hear on the same night that you'd won a player, sort of World Player of the Year as well? No, no, no. So I won this one, um, the PFA one, was on uh, Sunday evening, and then uh, my agent Georgie called me the next day to be like, "Oh, you've won the Football's Writers Association wow. one as well." So I was driving home on the way home from PFA, and so I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> like, <laughs> I just keep collecting them. It never yeah. made the cause. And is that fantastic. the one that where you're competing with players from all over the world? No, so that's just in this country. Right. Um, but uh, the Football Association one is for everyone as well. Wow. So it was a short list. Um, so, yeah. Like Which is really day. exciting, isn't it? For it it's obviously very different mm. today for a black footballer to play. But it's not, it's not unheard of that racism still creeps out and shows its ugly face. Mm -hmm. How far do you think we've come and how much further should we be aiming I to go? Piers, the thing is, when you, when you watch this, it's going to be very raw. And when, it's going to make some people will cringe. Um, with some of the stuff that's in it, but this, I think, is a celebration of how far mm. it has come. Mm. And people have got to see it, actually, as progress. Of course, we've still got a long way to go. People saying to me, yeah, but when's the last time you experienced racism? And it's not purely mm. about experienced yeah. racism. There's still racism and undertones of it going on, but this is a celebration. What, are, what I think is nice is you can watch England play now and skin colour is completely irrelevant. Yeah. You can watch Raheem Sterling be brilliant. Do you not feel we're getting there? Of course we are. Of course we're getting there. And I think that programmes like this, you know, Gabriel Clark and the people that know mm -hmm. it, you know, they, they, it, the, the research and everything that's going on into it, of course, that's where you want to be. That's the, that's the end goal. Whether that will happen or not in our lifetime is something mm -hmm. that, um, that remains to be seen. But the fact is we are very much on the road to it. And, Alexander, I mean, before this had happened yeah. in your family, had you <coughs> thought about organ donation? Or was no. it... This is the thing, is it? We don't. Mm. It's one of those things that you don't yeah. necessarily talk about, and that's part of the issue, isn't it? That until someone you love is yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I thought about and ever thought, would have thought I'd need, I'd find myself doing or being in that situation, whether it would be me or a family member. I mean, obviously now you're left with one kidney, yeah. and so that is, that does po you know that does pose a risk. And was it difficult for you to? Accept Alexander's gesture, and or, or was it just you just had to go ahead with it? No, it, it was very difficult because um, even when, when I had the transplant and then I was up and about after about three days, and I went to go see Alex and to see the way Alex was, he wasn't very well after the operation, mm. and I was obviously well not half saying myself. I say to myself, look, if I could change it now, I would. I would go back ill again Aww. to see Alex well because that, that's where I was at. Because I didn't want to see Alex go through the pain that I've been enduring. And that, that was very, very difficult for me. Is it, is, is it, has your bond changed? I mean, yeah. he's definitely come even yeah. closer here. Yeah. Definitely.
the amount of money or the, the win. With mm. some gamblers, that is the case. You know, it's they have £100, they need £200 to get the same kick, 500 1000 So yours 10, wasn't 000. financially motivated? No, mine was a, a, an inte intellectual exercise. Yeah. So for me, I'm thinking, I want to predict the outcome. So when you look at my football betting, it, in context, it's actually, I'm a huge sports fan. So it'll be sport betting. I mean, I place more bets on other sports than I did on football. How much are you missing playing? Oh, it was well, institutionalised. So you think I've dreamt, all I've ever dreamt about mm. is being a footballer from the age of conscious memory. I go to junior school, dream about being a footballer, senior school, mm. then I leave senior school, go into a professional so football So it must be eating away, away at you, isn't it? Uh, I don't live like that. I don't know whether it's a skill or a, or, a, or, a, or a problem of mine that I just keep moving forward. I mean, you've got to be resilient to be mm. in the position that we're all in. But have you consider, I mean, the way you describe your betting, you, you were still enjoying it. We, and yeah. usually addictions, for instance, are when you can't control a behaviour and you stop enjoying it. Yeah. So do you consider yourself an addict? I think I have addictive tendencies, mm. and I think that... The, the, because the, it's, the because it's put it's the kibosh on your footballing career, certainly for the, for the time being. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm, so why did you not try and do more to stop it? Because I enjoyed it. It's, it's the reality. I was mm. enjoying it. More than you enjoyed playing football? Well, I didn't ever think it'd be... Because that was I the trade-off, I didn't ever think, it? Suzanne, that I would get banned for it. 